Okay, so what we're going to look at is um, patching using looped parts of a clip. Um, this is good because it keeps the grain, so um, it, it means you don't have to do the business about denoising and then renoising at the end, regraining at the end, like we've just done in part two. Um, the only problem with this is you have to, you know, find um, enough clean shot plate that you can kind of repurpose and then loop that piece over and over again um, and, um, and and then comp it in. Um, with this it's easy because there's not too much happening but uh, you can imagine if the camera's moving a lot or people are moving in front of stuff you're never going to be able to find a piece that um, will allow you to loop. Um, the best way to think about this is more like an editing thing where if you were using an editing package you'd be just taking a slice or a cut um, of your clip and then just kind of butting together loads of edits so that you have that same thing again and again and again and again. Um, you could do that in Nuke through the read node where you've got some functionality to set the frame range here to make the edited part. Um, you could set the in point literally, that's that box here look, and set the out point there and then before it gets into that in point the behavior is selected here so you've got some choices and that's after the out point although having said all of that you would probably better to do it as a retiming operator so the equivalent of doing it that way in the read is uh, retime from the retime timing options there so it's a, a node and the best, uh, well, the, the the reason that this is good is again it's re readable in the script, so you can see what's happened in the script. It doesn't get hidden. If you're doing it that way, it always gets hidden, and you don't, you know, it's not obvious from the script what's gone on. So I'd I'd, I'd tend to do it this way. So what we're trying to do is loop up um, this plate so that again we first of all have um, it would be good to loop the first sort of few frames, maybe the first 12 um, and that will kind of ensure that the van sort of does that look right so um, that will be the first retime and then on the second retime we want to we're going to have to cover that van again where it's just we can just see the top of it is visible so we probably want to go to the end of the shot and loop that section there, look. And then again, like we did right at the beginning in part one, we can take this looped piece and then and, and put it on top of that looped piece. And then we get one hides the other, so we get clean frame or clean clip made with loops, with kind of two looped edited um, inputs really. So. Um, I'm going to put one retime. In fact, what I'll do is um, use the uh, just use the the, um, the dots to add kind of junction points, so I can put two retimes off them. Kind of one there, and then another one, another one in there. Just keep it neat. Okay, so on this first one. We can just set up the in point in the input range to go from 1, so just check the box there, to 12, and check the box there. It's interesting that you can reverse the clip as well, that's sometimes handy just to send the shot literally back to front in time, reverse time. We don't need that for this. So that will do that, that just sets the in and the out point and then the behaviour after that initial once through is set down here look so uh, it's on hold at the minute so what will happen now is once it gets past 12, if I'm looking at it that is, once it gets past 12 then it just holds look so movement up to 12 and then static because that's what it's told to do here. 
so we want it to go loop afterwards. So it goes to the first, gets the first 12, and then carries on looping, 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 looping that 12 all the way to the end. And you can see that that's what's happening there, look. That's all good, that's what we want. Makes good sense to rename the node so we know what it's doing in the script. Loop. Frame 1, 2, 12. And it comes up and that text displays on the node underneath there so we, we know what's what. And then on the second one, we just want to loop loop the end. So if I do uh, the last 12-ish frames, that would be what? That would be one five four. One five three rather to one six five. And then instead of being looping, instead of telling it to loop afterwards, we want to tell it to loop before. So it does the same thing um, in the, that back section of frames. They're just going to go like run through, run through, run through. So literally looped all the way to the end again. So we'll rename that second retime so it makes sense what's happening inside it. And then we just need to bring those two together. Well, we've already done that um, right in part one at the start. Oh, sorry, we did it part two, didn't we, where we looked at comping two stills together rather than painting, if you remember. So I can use a similar roto that will, let's have a look. We'll get rid of that little bit of van there. So I want to take that end loop and cut it out according to this little roto. So you already know all this by now. And then the usual thing should be well used to this. Uh, it's front over back. Does that work? Yep, that works. Oh no, hang on. That's not quite right, is it? Yes, it is. I'm not looking in the right place. When I look in the right place, it's fine. So I've got this little piece, and that's covering up where it is in that first set of frames. Look, so this one there covers up this one here, giving me everything clean. But importantly, um, what you should see is the grain characteristics. So even though it's a looped thing, that still carries and it still looks like a you know moving bit of footage. Um, and so that's that really. So maybe takes a bit of thinking through and a little bit of planning. Um, but it's just to say don't forget this one because it's quite handy it mainly you know you have all the grain there um, you just have to try and edit take a little piece from the clip and then just loop it up um, and sort of put sections of looped footage together sometimes as in this case works quite well and so then we're um, I won't waste time by doing it all again but we just to show you the finished thing we just pinch in bits in this case we've already done the the other ingredients that we need to finish this shot or this example off we have the roto and we have the we should have the finished thing so that will cut out 
just that section that I want look with all the grain so then I'm easy peasy just layering it front over back grand so all the grains there and um, that works um, it might be that we have to get into looking at stabilizing and tracking um, might get away with it but, it, but there's a chance that this um, the two loops are moving in their own way so they'd have to be stabilized um, and then that whole thing would have to be kind of match moved so that the track matches the weave in the in the plate again um, but just stopping short of that that's a pretty good solution so um, that's that that's the end of this um, kind of rig removal 101 really we've, we've looked at um, using live patches where you move a bit of the plate over you select the problem and then you that selection cuts out the plate and you comp and then we've looked at using stills and now we've also looked at working with looped patches as well um, thanks for listening cheers